I've been talking for about 15 minutes, you know what, I'm going to pretty much shut up because, <laughs> because, Karen, not only have you got all of these amazing guests together, but you have got some proper amazing guests who I know are going to want to talk quite a lot. So I'll just shut up and listen pretty much, except to say that, ha, huh, your first guest, I'm going to be honest, today is a special weekend for me. It's my 50th anniversary of my first football match. At age seven years old, I went off to see Everton play Panathinaikos in the Ayas Nicolaus Stadium in Athens in 1971. An uh, incredible game, European Cup, Cup, Champions League, what used to be known as the European Cup, now Champions League. And of course, it was a huge football fan. And of course, there was only one player at the time who was the world's best player. And that was, of course, George Best. Um, and I, like many people of my era, I grew up in absolute awe of that man. And I cannot believe that you have Angie Best as our first guest. And Angie is iconic. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and now all the way through the noughties into... I don't know what you call the last one. Was it the teenies, I think? But here we are in the 20s, with 2021. Yeah. And Angie Best. It's nice. I did tell shut up, but I wasn't. Angie Best actually got a CBD range out, which is just like, you know, for a man who started Wolf UK's first hemp company 30 years ago, to see now this whole tie up. So there we go. Karen, would you do us the honours? Please introduce a fabulous, 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 iconic, incredible. Very famous, and we are just, you know, proper fangirl here, I've got to say. Um, <laughs> I can't follow that. I think let's just bring on the most wonderful Angie Best, because there's no way I could follow all what Tim said. Good morning, Angie. It is such a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Babes, how am I supposed to follow that? Thank you, Tim. Bless you. Oh. But boy, am I old. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Oh. Ooh. I, I'm with you, Angie. I, I, I remember the 60s. And, and you know, to, to have you... Because, of course, the lead light, you know, it's just, just like, oh, gosh, you must have hung out with some of the most amazing people, too. Yeah, I mean, like, I have. This is just a whole history of, of amazing people. Who's your best pal, then? I'm going to ask, jump straight in. I said to Karen, I'd sharp, and here I am. <laughs> hey, who's your current best pal from those times? From those times? Oh, goodness. Um, well, Cher, of course. Um, but I have a new singer that is my current best pal now. Her name is Linda Pagnini, um, and she's got a, there's a two of them called Crombie and Pagnini, and they uh, sing, they write, they sing, and they make the music, and it's just sensational. So that's my latest um, best pal. <laughs> That's fantastic. I know Tim's probably got... Look, Tim, I'm not going to stop you. I know. No, no, no. No, Aaron, don't let him because it'll all be football questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I've done my football bit. I'm not going to ask any more. I'm not going to say anything. You know. oh. Tim, I have a question for you. Do you play football? Who, me? Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? I, I, I have played football for a long time and then, like a lot of us, I've got a little bit of so injuries kicked in. I was a goalkeeper, so... Um, and I still bear the scars, actually, because when I was a kid, we used to play pretty much on, well, concrete. It wasn't quite yeah. concrete. It was baked, yeah. baked, uh, so, you know, Athenian baked, stony crown is where I learned to play football. And I, I sort of bear, got the scars still. But uh, what I did learn to do was to referee and to manage. So I did my junior football coaching and then my referees. And I, I love refereeing, I've got to say, but I don't anymore. I used to love refereeing. So there you go. Yeah. Bless you. Well done. All oh. right, Tim, goodbye. <laughs> 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 That's never gonna happen, Angie. You do you did make me laugh. I've gone all red now. Coming on and saying good morning, babes. 
you know, I know you come from Essex like I do as well. That's you can never take the Essex out of the lady, can you? You don't want to, my love. No! Very proud Essex. Look, you've got a gorgeous background. Talk me through. Are you in your gym? Am I in? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is my studio. Yeah. It's a bit messy at the, mo at the moment because we use it for packing up all our CBD stuff as well because the gym's been shut for the last year. Of so, course. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Look, see, it's a bit messy. Oh, I want to come else. over. I miss the so, gym. Look at this. Look at the colours on that. Now, this um, is one of the orchids. I rescued all these orchids, right, that were dead. And I brought it back to life, and it's just given me a baby. And look at the colours on that. Isn't that beautiful. beautiful? I'm just sitting here looking at it and thinking, as we all know, Mother Nature needs no help from us. That is wonderful. Angie, look, you're a woman's alternative health expert, nutritional therapist, the co-founder of Chill Out Fred. Um, I know you run a fantastic fitness place. You know, we, we're getting to see it in the background there. You've done some incredible things throughout your life. I still love, I, well, it was, wasn't that long ago when you was on Celebrity Big Brother. Oh, I love that. You I were just, just loved that. fantastic on there. You, I, I love you were dro dropping all these healthy tips and talking to everybody. Onto it's, death ears, I was. Oh no! It but was, you do, you do on, look. Nobody on Celebrity Bro Big Brother. It went in one ear and out the other. Nobody wanted to know, which was fine. I mean, you know, I can't help it. It's just what I do. Drop health, and I, and so when when people ignore me, it's like okay, that's fine. Mm. You never know, though, Ranch. It's interesting because there's this whole thing about planting seeds, and you know the whole. The whole way people change is 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 our complex issue, of which I don't pretend to understand. But what I do know is that, and especially in social media, is that you know, being in public, it's good to be consistent, and and it doesn't really matter if people don't visibly respond because you never quite know how much something's just planted a little seed or watered a seed that had been planted previously. Um, so I think it's just very, very important to keep uh, being consistent with your with your message, yeah. of course, as that's I think we all are, a good advertisement for your lifestyle. That, that, that's, yes, thank you. That's that's why, I was going to say that's why I've lasted this long, because I have been planting seeds since I started doing this health thing at the age of 22, and I'm now 68. So, you know, that's a lot of, I've been doing it for a long time. And I think what has happened in this lockdown, which for me is phenomenal, other than the Nazi bit, is that people have been made conscious of their health. And they're suddenly going, oh, maybe I should look after myself. Maybe I should think about what I eat. And, and I, on my Instagram page, have um, people come to me and ask for help every single day, and not just one a day, it's like 10 a day because they're now becoming very understanding of the poisons in the prepackaged food, the poisons that are fed to the poor animals and how, how they get slaughtered. They're becoming so conscious of that now and so conscious of their own health and know that if they want to get through this nasty virus, they have to take care of themselves. And there is, there is no better way to do it than to have an alkaline body. And an alkaline body means non-acidic. The only things that create acid in a system are animal products, alcohol, and sugar. So you take those three out and you've got one healthy alkaline body. Have you been living, you know, the best you can then since you were in your early 20s, Angie? Or is, is it just been a, like a, being alkaline? Or is that something that you've... I learned, more later on more recently i learned about it when i was 22 years old yeah. and learning about it um you don't when you're really young you don't take it too seriously because you're invincible and yeah. you don't get sick yeah. and I, but i was living in california um and everybody there because they appreciate and respect their bodies, the one body that God gave them, they, um, 
they're a lot more health conscious. So I grew up surrounded by very health conscious people. Um, and so it fed me. And so I've been on that path since, well, actually, when I think about it, I've been on that path since I was a little girl because my dad used to, um, he had betting offices and he used to bring home, carry a, on a Friday night, carry a bags full of funny looking fruit that his Chinese um, people that were betted in his shop would give him as gifts. Now, my sister and my mother and my dad all looked at it and didn't know what it was, shrugged their shoulders and walked away. I ate every single piece of fruit because I just knew it was good for me. So, you know, it's one of those things you consciously know and you have to trust your instincts and trust yourself. And I have since from day one. And the exercise was the same thing. I think that's wonderful, Angie. And I've got to say, you know, we've been friends on Facebook for quite some time. And you know what Facebook's like. Sometimes things pop up, sometimes they don't. But when I've seen your posts, you're very vocal as well about the rights of animals. You know, it, I know you're passionate about health, but the animals are important as well, aren't they, to you? It's, I, as a mother, could not take a baby cow away from its mum so, and, and kill it just so I can drink her milk. I can't do that. My conscience won't let me. My whole being says, no, we have no right to do that when there are other milks that are just as good and a bloody lot healthier. Um, so yes, of course the animals have rights. We have no dominion over them. We have no right to, to use and abuse them. Now, I can understand some people saying, um, well, if you have a cow and you take some of its milk, or if you have your chickens and they make food for you, in your back garden, okay. But the way we have it set up with these mass big farms where pigs, these beautiful intelligent animals, are kept in crates where they can't move and their babies have no access to their mum and this intelligent creature who wants to mother her children can't even get to them. I mean, who in their right mind would, would want to be part of that just so they can have a bacon sandwich? Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. Right, don't get me uh, rattling on because I want, no, to, we want to hear it. it. <laughs> well, it's very interesting because you go back to the 70s when I remember you know, although I, I, remember, I was a sort of teenager in the 70s, uh, but I remember the vegetarian culture, you know, back 50 years ago, early 70s, you know, being vegetarian was really like being vegan now. It's a really big statement. In fact, actually, even bigger than being vegan now, because then 50 years ago, it was really, you really were the only veggie in the village. It really was like that. The very few and you were a hippie. And, and, and yeah, the people that the, the forerunners to this whole movement, as it were, you know, I think it's important for people to remember, especially younger vegans, just how much work has been done that's gone back. And and it is, you know, an ongoing process to a point where we get to a point where I think we actually understand that all animals are not ours to use. Well, that's the basis of animal rights. Like all animals have a right not to be used by humans. And, and, and that message is coming through loud and clear. And I think the, the original pioneers who went veggie, you know, my great aunt was vegetarian back in 1910. She went vegetarian. Yeah, a whole, uh, you know, so it's a family of vegetarians. If you trace back the history, it's just really interesting. Very much tied in with the suffragettes movement too. So 150 years ago, strain to the suffragettes movement coming through with uh, foundations of anti-vivisection movement and uh it's just incredible that we've now got to this point we're really this 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 understanding that, that basically all animals have a right not to be used as property and that has taken such a lot of work to get it to this point now well because um, um even back in jesus's time they ate and they they ate animals so you've got you've got <laughs> we've got a lot of work to do to convince people yeah. that we've moved on from that now we're not neanderthals anymore 
we some are. Cu- some cultures, of course, have, have a plant-based diet absolutely written into their history. You know, and so- I'll tell you an interesting one. They do. And the Chinese, who are predominantly plant-based, those women don't have menopause because of their because of the diet that they have is so much uh, phytoestrogen based. So menopause, as we know, is very much a Western diet created problem. And I talk about that in my book that's coming up soon. So- um, Talking of your book, have you got a book out, Andrew? No, I haven't got one out yet, but I've got a a lifestyle one coming. That's menopause and and alkaline. It's menopause and alkaline based. Okay. I think that sounds fantastic. Angie, I want to say, I, because obviously we've got a jam-packed weekend, jam-packed show, I'd love to do more, we can chat further. I want to know now, why are you passionate about CBD? Tell us about Chill Out Fred. We've only got a matter of minutes, it's absolutely That's flying Tim's by. Tim. I know, Tim! Tim, <laughs> Tim now! No more questions from Tim. Angie, CBD, why is it important to us? First of all, hemp is such an amazing product to grow for the planet. And it's all carbon. It's it's sensational. It would save the planet if we grew it for everything. Um, But I I found out about it when we were allowed to grow hemp again, which just pisses me off royally. I can't begin to tell you. Um, because they stopped uh, us growing hemp way back in the 60s so that they could grow a more profitable crop called cop. Mm. And so since then, we've not been allowed to grow it. It's been illegal. In 2018, we were allowed to grow it. So in 2019, I fa- find out about CBD. And I'm reading and looking at this, and it is so I try it. And it is such an amazing natural product given to us by Mother Nature. So I think. I've got to tell people about this. So we start our CBD company in lockdown. It started last month. And of course, what's really sad is that 90% of the CBD that's that's sold out there in the market in Holland and what have you, is um, one isolate from China, which does so little. The real thing is such a promising product that's not yet owned by Big Pharma. Mm. They've got their fingers in it. They're trying to get to it, but not yet. So um, when I realized and tried it on people and saw how much it helped with arthritis, fibromyalgia, all sorts of pain, it's an emotional stabilizer. It helps you. You have an endocannabinoid system, just like you've got a... Uh, immune system, a cardiovascular system, uh, a reproductive system, you have an endocannabinoid system. We're not taught this in school for, for the very reason because it was illegal. But we have an endocannabinoid system. And when all your systems are functioning fully, then your body works so much better. So it seems to me if we put the endocannabinoid, the CBD, into our system, and our endocannabinoid system is allowed to flourish, then we may have found the missing link to a lot of these small illnesses that bother so many people. Absolutely. Well done. I completely agree with that, Angie. Uh, having been a hemp uh, aficionado for a long time now, and I mean, I remember CBD appearing 10 years ago, some of my colleagues' powers are using it to treat, treat serious cancers. With, with yes. So it's I, a I have, I have a good one. Uh, but you're right, the uh, dosage and the manufacturing, also, it's quite quite an issue, quite an area. I'm certainly not an expert myself, but uh, I'm very much aware that there's different strengths and such like, there's different uh, effects. Um, but it is a fascinating area. And, uh, you know, the whole cannabis medicine, broadly speaking, is 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 still in its infancy when i was campaigning it's, for legalized so cannabis 40 years ago yeah we were promoting a big part was the the, the health benefits of, of potential but um, tim, very on tap yes tim quiet tim. i want to hear angie you've got a whole weekend <laughs> angie's got to rush off in a minute angie tell us and have you got any bottles you can show us oh yes <laughs> hold on <laughs> <laughs> She's, we get to see 
more of her gym now. Doesn't it look lovely? I wish I was over there. Babes, it is so beautiful here. I can't begin to tell you because I'm on the river. I am looking at the river and the rowers oh, and the swans. And it is oh. just, oh, it's so beautiful. And In the you, summer. Oh, I'm well, gel. Sorry, so, so you out for it. Oil, right? Yeah. And then we have it now because this CBD is so good for your internal organs, it's also good for your biggest organ your skin so we now have a line of cbd skin care face night body and uh therapy oil so that when you finish playing football you've got sore knees or some of you strained your hamstring you rub the therapy oil on and hmm. angie got. that sounds so wonderful we want more time but we're out of time. Will you I come know, on again and we can go a little bit deeper into the CBD, Angie? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You're not allowed on next time. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have girly time. Yes. We're going to have ch chats without Tim being, you know, a girl fan and passionate about football. No, it, yeah, we, we, we could to... spend all day speaking to you, Angie. We have to talk about CBD and the menopause. It's so good for the menopause. Because yeah. it's an emotional stabiliser. Angie, it's fantastic. We absolutely love you to pieces. Thank you. You're an inspiration. You look gorgeous. We wish you all the success with Chill Out Fred. I know I'm going to be trying it. So thank you for joining us this morning, Angie. Bye, Kim. Bye. 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 And go and have a Rossi's ice cream for me. Oh, we'll do. They do vegan. Do they? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Rossi's now do a vegan? Yeah. You've made it, babe. You've <laughs> made it. Bye. Bye. Bye, Angie. Thanks. Oh, my gosh. What an absolute giggle. She is utterly fantastic. That's, that's really interesting. I mean, it's just very, yeah. very interesting to catch up with people who sort of heard of all your life and then, bang, get to meet and uh, share a little glimpse into their lives. And um, But it's very interesting. The whole CBD aspect so right um what's it called chill out fred yeah. where can people go karen just remind people where they can go to see angie's chill. cbd range is, is chill out fred is the website chill out fred. com. it's brand yeah, so new I can't wait to try it. And, and it's in its early days uh cbd you know it's still in its early days and there's a lot of research going into yeah. it but um, there is obviously a lot of potential there and a lot of people using um the uh the products and um angie thank you thank you for coming on and sharing a little glimpse of your oh wasn't she just fantastic